Hey guys, this is a quick video for Math 2400. In this video we're talking about modular arithmetic. In other words, um, integers modulo m or n. Okay, so we have a definition. Um, so n is going to be a positive integer. And we define a way, a relation on the integers by this, by the rule, by this rule, that a is congruent to be mod n, or a is congruent to be modulo n, if and only if n divides b minus a. Just a quick example. You know, we're gonna say that one is gonna be a congruent to six mod five. Why? Well, because if I do 6 minus 1, that's 5, which is divisible by 5. And these numbers are also both congruent to 11, for example. Why? Well, 1 is congruent to 11 mod 5 because 11 minus 1 is 10. And 10 and 5 divides 10. You know, 10 is 2 times 5. Okay. So if this if n divides b minus a, we say a is congruent to b modulo n, and write like this. Okay. Um, so this gives you a way to decide if any two integers are, are congruent modulo n. So we get a relation. And importantly, congruence modulo n is actually an equivalence relation. Okay. What does that mean? If you don't remember what equivalence relation means, let me remind you. Uh, that means what we're saying is that congruence modulo n satisfies three properties. Um, one is that a is congruent to a for all integers a. Another is that if a is congruent to b, then b is congruent to a and then we have also have the transitive property that if a is congruent to b and b is congruent to c then a is congruent to c okay so in other words like congruence mod n behaves a lot like equality does okay and let's let's for example let's try to prove um, the transitive property Okay, so let's suppose that a is congruent to b mod n and b is congruent to c mod n and we're supposed to show that a is congruent to c mod n. Okay, by definition of congruence, n divides b minus a and n divides c minus b. Okay, now by the properties of divisibility, n must also divide the sum c minus b plus b minus a but that sum is just c minus a, so n divides c minus a. In other words, by the definition, a is congruent to c mod n. Okay, so that shows uh, transitivity and reflexive and symmetric are similar. Okay, just for your information, this is the reflexive property. This is the symmetric property. This is the transitive property here. Okay. So congruence modulo n is an equivalence relation. Okay. Um, not only that, but we'll see a little bit later that uh, congruence modulo n kind of respects the addition and multiplication of the integers. Okay. We'll see what that means. Okay. For now, what we can do is take an integer a, take n, a positive integer n, and we can look at the congruence class of a modulo n. So we call this a bar, or a with a bar on it. And it's just defined by the rule that the congruence class of a is all the integers which are congruent to a mod n. Okay. Now gather up all the congruence classes modulo m, and we call that z mod m, or the integers modulo m. So these are the set of all congruence classes modulo m. Okay. 
and now we can we we have to define arithmetic on this set and we just define it by um if i want to add two congruence classes i um i look at the representatives add those and then reduce modulo m i want to multiply two congruence classes i look at two represent the representatives of each multiply them together and take the congruence mod m for example let's look modulo 5 You know, if I want to do um, one congruence class of one times a congruence class of maybe 13, well, maybe let's do the congruence class of two. Well, I just multiply two times 13. That's 26. And I take the congruence class of that. So these two congruence classes multiply together was well, the congruence class of 26 and 2 plus 13 well I just add those and take that congruence class and that is a congruence class of 15 okay. uh, and that's fine except for um, there is a slight problem. What if um, this definition depends on what congruent, what representative for the congruence class I choose? For example, 13 and 3 represent the same congruence class. So there is a, so imagine, we could also perform the multiplication as 2 times 3, and that would give you the congruence class of 6. That's another way to do this arithmetic. And if the congruence class of 6 is different from the congruence class of 26, that is a big problem. Luckily, modulo 5, these are the same, right? Because 26 minus 6 is 20. That's a multiple of 5. So 26 is congruent to 6 mod 5. Okay. and the, 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 the theorem that we have uh, which, which we'll talk about is that these definitions of multiplication and addition modulo M are actually well defined okay so let's talk about that yeah let's do a little sketch okay so we're given given a and b integers or it, it, it yeah and we want to show actually we're given congruence classes modulo m okay and we want to show that um the congruence class of a times the congruence class of b is well defined so what that means is that like a congruence class can have different representatives and we want to so let's say we have two representatives a and a prime for a congruence class and a different congruence class b we have two representatives b and b prime and we want to show that a times b is congruent to a prime times b prime okay so that's our goal or just as an aside we have to show that a B is congruent to A prime B prime mod N. Okay, so by definition of congruence, we have that N divides A prime minus A and N divides B prime minus B. That's from these two congruences. Okay, now look at A prime B prime minus AB. Now it, like subtract and add a prime B and factorize you get um, a prime B prime minus a B is really a prime times B prime minus B plus B times a prime minus a this is divisible by n this is divisible by n so this whole sum is divisible by n in other words n divides this in other words a prime B prime is congruent to a B mod n okay that means um, 
whatever way I choose, whatever, like if I choose different representatives for this congruence class and this congruence class, the multiplication is still gives you the same congruence class. Okay. Um, actually, let's stop there and pick it up in a different video. Okay, so thanks for watching. Um, in the next video, we'll talk about um, like in the kind of what what's called the units modulo M.